I know I've said this in many worst designs videos already, but Gen 7 didn't have a lot of objectively bad designs. I mean, everyone's going to not like the look of some Pokemon or another, but that doesn't mean the design is bad. For example, I'm not a big fan of Crab Roller and Crab Omnibal, but even though I don't find those designs very appealing myself, I actually think they're pretty good. I like that Crab Roller has a black eye and that its pincers look like boxing gloves. And Crab Omnibal is very ugly, but that's absolutely on purpose. But let's jump into it and talk about some of the worst designs of Generation 7. Most of the Pokemon we're going to talk about today aren't all bad. Some of them just have an aspect that doesn't quite work, or the designs are objectively good, but there's some context that throws it off. Like Togedemaru. It's really cute, but it's a pretty bland Pikachu clone. Sometimes the Pikachu clones represent something about their generation, like Pichu being a baby Pokemon, Puzzle and Minan being perfect for double battles, or Dedenne being a fairy type. Togedemaru isn't like that. And while Dedenne, for example, had interesting design details like the tail that looks like a frayed wire and the whiskers that look like TV antenna, Togedemaru's design features don't seem to have that kind of significance. The lightning rod, uh, whatever it is on the back of its head, tail or something, that's kind of interesting, but it's also not surprising in any way. We're used to the idea of lightning rods in Pokemon ever since that crazy episode of the anime with Pikachu hitting Rhyhorn's horn, so Togedemaru just ends up being nothing special. I really like Picky Peck. It's cute and makes a good woodpecker Pokemon. I also really like Toucanon. I wanted a Toucan design for a long time, and Toucanon was not much more than a Toucan. It's pretty solid. But Trumbeak? I don't know, it's just kind of dissonant. To me, it doesn't make much sense for a woodpecker to become a toucan since their beaks have completely different purposes, which means that unfortunately for Trumbeak, it's stuck in this kind of limbo of not really being a woodpecker, but not quite being a toucan either. The worst part though is how it can bend its beak, which one, that's just not how beaks are supposed to work. Two, it goes completely against the way both woodpeckers and toucans use their beaks since they rely on that rigidity to either pierce trees or break nuts. And three, it just looks super weird and kind of disturbing and I don't want to have to think about it. And on top of all that, Trumbeak kind of reminds me of Woody, which let's be honest, that's not an association that's going to do you much good. Speaking of bad associations, it's practically impossible to see gumshoes for what it was meant to be. It's supposed to reference the look of a detective wearing an overcoat and a cupola hat and in a sort of pensive demeanor. These details aren't very clear, but they might have been able to come through better if this Pokemon had been released a few years earlier. In 2016, it was impossible not to look at gumshoes and immediately think of Donald Trump. And that just kind of ruined it for me and for a bunch of other people. Which is too bad, because looking at it more objectively, Gumshoes is not bad. I'm going to preface this next segment with this. I really like these Pokemon. The concept is fantastic, they look really cool. My problem with them is more a case of missed opportunity. I'm talking about Type Null and Silvale. Type Null was made in the lab as a chimera of other Pokemon, but they mess up, it loses control, and they need to put a restraining mask on it. I love this idea. I also love that the collar mimics the ring around Arceus' body since they were essentially trying to recreate Arceus. But here's the thing. What Pokemon was Type Null made from? In terms of the design, it wasn't. The tail, the body, the legs, they're all fairly generic. They don't match up to any known Pokemon. I get not necessarily wanting to make that explicit, but logically they should have been recognizable. You could argue that those parts come from Pokemon that we don't know yet, but wouldn't it have been a lot cooler if you could have a close look and go, hey, that's a Gyarados tail, and that body, that's Absol. And then it evolves into Sylvalli. It's gained control over its power, so the mask is off and it's a bit whiter, but other than that, the body looks the same. It's like the Pokemon didn't really evolve at all. And that's just kind of disappointing. Now, imagine if Null's parts were recognizable and they all came from Pokemon that can mega evolve. Through an incredible bond with its trainer, Null evolves into Sylvalli, unleashes its full potential, and its parts are now those of the Mega forms. So that Absol body is now a Mega Absol, and that Gyarados tail is now a Mega Gyarados tail. Oh, I just like this idea so much, I wish they'd done that. And by the way, not a design thing, but wouldn't it have made more sense for Type Null to be typeless, like the move Struggle, instead of a normal type? But ultimately, the only Alolan Pokemon that I think is objectively bad 
is Bruxish. And it's not just because it's garish, although that doesn't help. If it was just a colorful fish, no problem. It would even help it blend in with the colorful coral reefs of Alola. But this Pokemon is supposed to hide in the sand? So being colorful doesn't even help it blend in. Bruxish is based on some pretty colorful fish like the Filefish and the Triggerfish, but none of them hide in the sand. And although they do have spines on the top of their heads, they don't seem to use them as lures the way Bruxish uses its bulb. Its mouth though, that has a solid origin since triggerfish have a very prominent mouth with very sharp teeth. But Bruxish also has very anthropomorphic lips and eyes. And that's what ruins it for me. Because of the colors, the lips, the eyes, Bruxish makes me think of someone who is overly made up and trying really hard to be attractive. And that's just not a good look on a person or on a fish and definitely not on a Pokemon. It ends up having the opposite effect and being repulsive instead of beautiful like the Filefish and the Triggerfish are. And that brings the Pokemon Creature Design Review to an end. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this series. If you haven't been watching since the beginning and you want to see more, check out the playlist in the end screen. And don't forget to let me know if you agree or if I'm totally wrong by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to vote for which Pokemon you think I should redesign first, Meganium, Unknown, or Sunflora. The link to the Twitter poll is in the description. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video, share the series with your friends, and subscribe if you're new here. I hope that you're all having a fantastic holiday season. I'm Umbreon Libris, and I'll see you in the next chapter.